Hi! So lots of videos right now on YouTube about the Xbox 360, and rightfully so, because there are some situations occurring that are making it a little bit more difficult to uh, buy games for the 360 because their digital storefront is shutting down in July. And I am not above riding the coattails of significantly more talented and more successful people than me. So today I want to talk to you about the 10 most valuable Xbox 360 games in my collection. We're going to go over each of them, we're going to talk about each of them, we're going to go over how their prices have increased over the last year, and it might be some stuff to keep an eye out for if you are looking to collect games like this. I think we're going to start off at the tail end and work our way up to the most valuable, just because that seems the most interesting to me, really. Now there's a lot of games on the Xbox 360, and I've got a fairly decent library, but I don't necessarily have eh, the most exhaustive 360 library. There's certainly more involved libraries out there, more involved collections, but I do collect what I like. So if there's something on my list where you're like, why would you own that game? It's because I like it and it's because it's fun to me. And if there's something on here you're going, why don't you have that? Uh, let me know in the comments. I would love to know what games I should be looking out for because we're all in this together. And if we're all able to kind of keep an eye on games where prices are increasing or decreasing or fluctuating, that'd be pretty cool to be able to kind of keep our eye on that and help each other out and let each other know what games we should be checking out. Now, I will tell you guys right off the bat, whole lot of Spider-Man on this list, and not a single survival horror game. If you guys are new to the channel, not really a survival horror guy, not really my thing. I've got a few games here and there, but I don't actively collect for it. If you're looking for great survival horror games, I would go over to Retro Rivals. They're gonna have some stuff for you to take a look at over there. They're definitely more likely to be able to offer you some good suggestions than I am. All right, in at number 10, and not a terribly valuable game by any stretch of the imagination. It's only coming in at 20 bucks, complete in box, but it is a game I really, really enjoy, and I think it's a very clever title, and that is The Saboteur from Electronic Arts. That's my cue. So I think one of my favorite games on the Xbox 360 that really gets overlooked, and I think because of the label on it from its publisher of Electronic Arts, is The Saboteur. Set during World War II, you play as Sean, a character who is involved in the Paris Resistance, and one of the things I really love about this game is the fact that it involves something really clever to show your influence through the city. Color. In Nazi-occupied areas of the city, it's going to be in stark black and white, but as you bring freedom to the city of Paris, more colors will be brought in. The only thing you're going to see other than black and white are your character's eye colors and the red on the Nazi uniforms. And it's a fantastic third-person action-adventure game. I think it's a really ambitious title, and it was something that I thought was going to spin into like a series of games. I really thought we were going to see more from this, but unfortunately, we only got the one. Now, back in January of 2020, this game was selling for $5 complete in box, and today it's over $20 now, at $23.98. And yeah, there's going to be some disparity between what I said in the original video and this audio because it's been a few days since I initially recorded it. But I think that this is a game that a lot of people overlooked, and if you haven't had a chance to play it, you should do so. We do jump up in value here uh, for our next game. It comes in at tw a value of $27 complete in box. This is from Bandai Namco, and this is from a series I really enjoy. I liked it from the moment I played it originally on the PS2, and I like it here on the 360 as well. And that is Beautiful Katamari. <laughs> I don't think the Katamari franchise needs a whole lot of introduction here. Like, we all kind of are familiar with what it is, right? You play as the Prince of All Cosmos, you have to clean up your dad's mess, who once again has wrecked everything, and you, you do that by rolling a ball around and picking things up. In this game, you're going to be collecting presents, you're going to be collecting items, you're going to be finding cousins, and, I mean, yeah, it's a Katamari game. It's just the unique Katamari game that happens to be landlocked on the Xbox 360 and hasn't seen a re-release anywhere else. But it's still a Katamari game, which means it's still fun, it still has amazing music, and the gameplay is going to be solid. Now, from a value perspective, this is one that has seen some increase over the last few years. Starting in 2020, this was a regular CIB price of about 12 bucks. Not a bad price for a Katamari game. But today, it's going for almost 30 This is actually selling now for over $29 complete in box. So the value is just continuing to go up. I think that probably has a little bit to do with the fact that, like I said, it is landlocked on the Xbox 360. That might change if we ever see it get a re-release, but for now, this is where it lives, and the price continues to go up. All right, now I am not above collecting loose disc games. I absolutely prefer complete and box stuff, but if there is a reason or an opportunity for me to get a loose-based game, 
and I can add to the packaging later, I'm gonna do that. And that is kind of what happened here. And this is our first Spider-Man game on the list. This one comes in at $27, and this is Spider-Man, friend or foe. What's that? So Spider-Man Friend or Foe is a really interesting game because it's, it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination, but I think it is probably the most basic of any of the Spider-Man games that released on the Xbox 360. And it's seen some really interesting price trending. So as far as gameplay goes, this is a very straightforward beat-em-up kind of game. It has 3D arenas, you go through, you're fighting using different Marvel characters, some Z-list, some A-list, and you're going to just fight and make your way through each level. It works pretty well. It's actually a really fun game. The value interest comes into me because you've seen some really interesting fluctuations on this price. So back in January of 2020, now I do have this loose, but we'll talk about loose and CIB prices here. Loose, this game was going for 11 bucks, and Complete in Box was only going for 15 which is not a bad price for a game like this. But we've seen a couple of interesting spikes. In February of 2022, this spiked up loose to $33.33, and Complete in Box of almost 48 bucks at 47.30. And today this has it at 27.25 loose and $45.83 Complete in Box. I do enjoy this game. I don't necessarily think it's worth those levels of price, but this is what happens to licensed games that are fun and feature characters that we love that unfortunately have the rights lapse on them where they're not able to be re-released. So we're only going to see prices continue to increase on games like this. Jumping up now to almost a $40 value comes one of my personal favorite games on this list, one of my personal favorite games on the console. It is from the mind of James Gunn. I've talked about this game numerous times on the channel. I think it is an absolute blast to play. It is the only survival horror game on this list, and I use that term very loosely because it really is just a hack and slash that happens to involve zombies. And that is Lollipop Chainsaw at $39 complete in box. I've spoken about Lollipop Chainsaw numerous times on the channel in the past. It's one of my favorite Xbox 360 games. It's completely out of my normal wheelhouse of titles, and that is because of the creative team behind it. James Gunn was the writer, Suda51 did the gameplay, so it's a perfect chaotic mesh of these brilliant, demented, wonderful creators making an exploitation film into a video game, and it just works. It doesn't hurt that the game is really easy on the eyes, that it's very fun, it's very irreverent, and it just plays brilliantly well. From a value perspective, this one has seen some interesting increases over the years. So back in January of 2020, this was selling complete in box for only $11.27. That's around when I got it. I think I, sp I think I paid about $15 for it CIB. Today, it's over $35. It's actually selling CIB for $38.06. It's a really, really solid game. And the 360 version is actually the considerably cheaper one. The PS3 one is even more insanely priced. But if you have a chance to play this one, I do urge you to check it out because I do think it's a fantastic game. One of the biggest weak points of the Xbox 360's library is that there just aren't a lot of RPGs for it. There are Western-based RPGs, stuff like Fable, stuff like the Elder Scrolls games, and those are fantastic. But a lot of JRPGs just kind of fell silent. They weren't released here on the Xbox 360 but there were a few really good ones. And this one is one that I really enjoy. This one has seen some prices jump up over the last year. I remember when I bought this, I got it for, I think, $25 complete in box. It's now going for $42, and that is Eternal Sonata. Eternal Sonata is one of the weirder games in my collection because it's such a bizarre concept. You are playing a game set in the fever dream mind of Frederick Chopin as he's dying from tuberculosis. And you even get to play as Chopin, yeah, the composer, as the game goes on. You start the game as Polka, a girl who can use magic, which means she unfortunately is going to die, and every interaction you have in the game is based on Chopin's imagination. It's something that's supposed to be happening in his head. It's a really, really weird concept with some incredible gameplay. So you have your standard JRPG fare where you're wandering around the countryside and running into monsters, but when you actually get into combat, that's really where the game opens up and sings. You have the ability to move around the stage, do active combat, and to attack your enemies using button presses as opposed to just being turn-based. It's got a little bit more to it, and I think that's a really, really clever way to design the combat mechanic. This one has seen some bizarre price increases. So consistently, this game was selling for about $10 complete in box for years. It saw nothing over a spike of maybe $15, but 
But recently, this has gone from a $16 complete in price box in February of 2024 to today being over $45 CIB. It's a good game. I don't think it's $45 worth of good, though. Everyone knows I like licensed games, and this is not a Spider-Man licensed game. This is a different license altogether. This is from the Transformers universe, and this is one that I've suggested again on the channel a few times in the past. This one comes in at $46 complete in box. It's a great game. It's a very Gears of War-like. This is Transformers Fall of Cybertron. Door opens. We go out hard. You will engage the enemy with guns blazing and gears grinding. I've spoken about Transformers Fall of Cybertron a bunch of times on the channel in the past, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this one other than to tell you the basics of the gameplay. You get to play as the Autobots. It is a third-person shooter, kind of like Gears of War. I call it a Gears of War-esque game because it feels like a Gears game. You get to play as all your favorite Autobots. You get to transform into vehicles. You get to ram nameless Decepticons and named Decepticons. Really, there's a lot of Decepticon ramming in this game. And it's just fun. I think it's a quality title. I really do. And this is kind of an example of what we saw with the Spider-Man game earlier, where we're starting to see prices go up because this game will never be re-released because the rights are held by Activision and they don't have the Transformers rights anymore. Back in 2020, this game was selling for $12 complete in box. Today, $47.97. We're going to continue to see these games go up in price because of the quality and because they can never come out again on any platform. I'm pretty sure we're seeing price jumps on this one because of the late Akira Toriyama's passing. And this is a, I think it's a game people need to play, but not in so much as it being a fantastic game because it is a very buggy game. It's a very, I don't want to say shoddily put together because that's unfair to the developers, but it is a game that I think could have been a lot more. And that is Blue Dragon. Now, I have talked about Blue Dragon briefly on the channel in the past, and it's one of those games where I look at it and I think this could be so much more because it is a very clunky game based on the pedigree behind it. So, obviously, the look of the game was inspired and designed by Akira Toriyama. The pedigree behind the gameplay was done by people who worked on Final Fantasy, and unfortunately, it just does not come together very well. It does have some interesting firsts on it for being an Xbox 360 game. It's the first multi-disc game. It's got some pretty ambitious gameplay that just doesn't quite stick the landing just because it just didn't work. It wasn't a great game overall. I do think if you are a fan of Akira Toriyama, you do owe it to yourself to play it. But unfortunately, what we're seeing as far as prices go on this game is directly because of his untimely passing earlier this year. This is a game that was not expensive for a long time. In January of 2020, this was $10 complete in box. Over the last few months, though, in February, this was complete in box for 20 in March, it jumped up to 35 In April, it was at 51 And today, in May, it's $49.99. That is directly because of Toriyama's passing. It's still good, don't get me wrong. It's just, I don't think it's worthy of the price it has on it right now. All right, Spider-Man game number two, and this is another loose disc. This is a really, really good game. I've got this on the Wii as well, but here on the Xbox 360, I think is really where it sings. Uh, magnificent title you get to play as Spider-Man. Ultimate Spider-Man, Spider-Man Noir, and Spider-Man 2099. And this one, coming in at $58 loose, is Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. Spider-Man of the year 2099. That's me, ready to save the universe and looking good while doing it. These last three games on the list are all licensed titles, and they are all going to fall prey to the fact that because they are licensed, they can't get re-released because they've either had their rights holders pass on, they have had their rights moved to other companies. They have had movies that have moved to other movie studios now in some cases. And unfortunately, that just means that they are basically stuck in video game hell and they'll never come back. And that is a damn shame because up first is Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, which is brilliant. You get to play as Spider-Man 2099, the standard Amazing Spider-Man that we all know and love, Ultimate Spider-Man in his symbiote suit, and Spider-Man Noir. And each character plays a little bit differently. Each character has a little bit different ability and a little bit different gameplay style, which is a lot of fun to experience. And each level that you go to make, utilizes those abilities and those skills brilliantly well. From a value perspective, this game is all over the map. Starting in 2020, loose it was selling for 17 and complete in box it was selling for $19.80, which is really nothing in the grand scheme of things. But we have seen some crazy fluctuation on prices. Back in January of 2022, Loose this sold for 76 and Complete in Box it sold for 77. 
which is just asinine to me. That is spiking because someone bought it loose thinking they were probably getting it complete in box and not paying attention. We saw it drop down a little bit in October of 2022, but it rose back up in July of 2023. And today we find ourselves at a point where complete in box is selling for $72 and loose this disc is worth 60. This is probably my favorite Spider-Man game on the Xbox 360. So I do see the value of it there. It is a very fun title, but the values for this game are just so crazy to me being all over the map as they are. I would expect you're going to see the price on this game continue to increase as we get closer to the release of Deadpool 3 and we get closer to the point where Hugh Jackman retires as Wolverine. But if you are able to find this game at a decent price, I urge you to do so because it is magnificent. One of my favorite hack and slash games on the Xbox 360, coming in at $63 complete in box. This is X-Men Origins Wolverine, a million times better than the film. So this one is X-Men Origins Wolverine, based on the absolute worst, worst X-Men movie. And uh, you New Mutants haters can stick it because this one is so much worse than New Mutants ever was. This is a phenomenal game based on a horrible movie. And I don't know how we were so lucky to get this amazing, amazing title. For something that was ridiculous and campy and poorly written and poorly directed and poorly executed across the map, how we got this incredibly violent, dark, gritty Wolverine game out of it is crazy to me because this game eclipses the movie it's based on in every conceivable way. From a value perspective, this one has seen some prices go up recently, and I do think that's because of the upcoming Deadpool and Wolverine movie that's coming out. Because in January of 2020, this was only selling for 10 bucks, complete in box. We did see some prices rise up going into 2023, where complete in box it was going for around 37 but today it's over 60 bucks complete in box at $63.60. I do think because of the Deadpool movie and the fact that this is probably Hugh Jackman's last go around in the role, this is going to continue to go up in price, especially because with Activision now being owned by Microsoft, we'll never see this released anywhere else. It's a good game though, definitely worth checking out. If you can find it at a good price, pull the trigger, pick it up. And number one with a bullet. Coming in complete in box at $77 is our third and final Spider-Man game on the list. This is Spider-Man Web of Shadows. Good times. MJ was getting her arm in a cast, and I was feeling lousy for not being by her side. But Finally and most valuably is Spider-Man Web of Shadows, which ironically, probably my least favorite game on this list of most valuable titles that I own for my Xbox 360. It's not to say it's bad. It's just my least favorite game on this list. It's an open world Spider-Man game during a symbiote invasion and you play to eliminate the symbiotes and you meet up with a ton of Marvel characters, both hero and villain throughout the storyline. You meet Luke Cage, there's Wolverine, Black Cat, Electro, like you name it. It's a, it's a who's who of characters that have interacted with Spider-Man in the past. It's just not as much fun as some of the other Spider-Man games or other games on this list. Now, from a value perspective, this one is consistently valuable. Back in January of 2020, this was selling for $20 complete in box, a little bit over, about $21 bucks complete in box. And we've seen a couple of spikes. At the start of January 2022, this actually spiked up to almost $100 complete in box at $94.99. Today, it's settling out at around $77.19, right around $77. Bucks. We have seen a couple of spikes around $90 bucks and up into the 80s, but... The mid-70s, upper 70s seems to be where it's kind of stalling out and where it's going to stick. Now, much like the other licensed games on this list, these are all Activision titles. These are all games that we will never see re-released in any way, shape, or form because Activision no longer holds the rights and Activision is now owned by Microsoft. So these games are locked on the 360 generation. And if you want to play them, that's where you've got to do it. That's my top 10. Like I said, I have a fairly big library, but I do lean into stuff like sports games and things like that. So my value isn't necessarily the highest. Let me know in the comments down below if you think there are any games I should be keeping an eye on, to be keeping a lookout for, to be adding to my collection that we think are going to see prices skyrocketing here very soon. There will be some more Xbox 360 content this month. I'm going to be looking at some games I think everyone should be picking up before the store closes. And then we're going to have to watch an incredible console right off into the sunset in July. Till next time, folks, I've been Jay. I appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me. If you enjoyed today's video, click the like button. The engagement helps the channel out. If you really liked the content, click the subscribe button as well and stick around I'm doing two videos a week. Till next time, I've been Jay. Remember to play more games, stay square, and take care. I'll talk to you soon.